Okay, so pre-comping or pre-composing layers is a way of grouping things together so that you can um, treat them as one object. And I'm using a simple uh, an example of that that I can. So it's just four yellow solids. You can see them here in the layers. So these are sitting inside in a composition called comp and each one of these layers is visible as, a, as an object in and of itself. Now if I wanted to do a kind of a rotate for example of all of these together as if they were you know window panes or something like that there's a lot of ways I could do it. One way would be to move all their anchor points into the center and then do a, a then modify all of their properties but it starts to make more sense as you get into this idea of grouping things together that you start working with null objects and pre-composing. So pre-composing allows you to select any number of layers they don't have to be, um, doesn't have to be all the layers necessarily, um, but in this case I am going to select all the layers. So I can shift click and select everything in there. And I can go up to, for the sake of the video, just go up to the menu. Down at the very bottom you'll see pre-compose, but get used to the shortcut, shift command and C. And when I pre-compose these, the effect will be that all of these layers will be placed inside in a new composition and that new composition is going to sit in their place in this current composition that we're looking at. Um, so when I click that it'll give me, it'll ask for a name, I call this four yellows just to keep it clear and um, move all attributes into the new composition. Yes, I won't open it because I want to stay here so that I can see the results of the pre-composing. So four yellows now sits in place of my four layers. Now I can double click on that to go inside. Everything is still there. It's just been pushed a level down in terms of the hierarchy of comp, which is a composition, which inside comp we have the four yellows composition and inside the four yellows composition we have our four yellow layers. Now I can, if I want to find my way up through the pre-comps just by clicking on this little spider looking thing there, that is the flow chart which shows me that if I'm in four yellows, four yellows is in comp and if I click on that it will bring me up a level. Now if I go deeper and create more comps and comps and comps then I'll have a much more detailed looking flow chart there to navigate between. So now I have um, grouped my objects but just as importantly that means that I now have uh, a set of transform properties that I can use across all of these guys. Okay so um, now if, if each one of these was rotating separately on their own layer I could also rotate them um, as a group. Okay I can also do simple fades across all four without having to do them on each individual one and pretty much anything. I can slide them across the screen and I have access to a clean set of properties here whereas I may have affected or adjusted the properties on these already. When you pre-comp you get, you get to use the properties again on the overarching comp. Now that's, um, that's basically pre-comping and uh, when you look at the, the, the H or the, the buildings example in, the, next, in the, the other tutorial you'll see why it is important and necessary for you to do that. Now this is simple pre-comping in two dimensions. When you start working in 3D it becomes a little bit more I wouldn't say complex but it gives you more to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into four yellows I'm going to select them all, hit the R key to bring up all of their rotation properties I'm also going to, well what I should have done actually is yeah so I've also put click the 3D box on the top one and because they're all selected they all get 3D and I have all of my different rotation properties here. Now what I'm going to do is a, a Y rotation keyframed over 10 seconds to you know um, rotate 15 times. Now because I'm, I've selected all of my layers that's a convenient aspect of After Effects if I select all the layers and just modify the top one it will automatically do the same change to anything else that's selected down along the layers. So that's why selecting everything will allow you to modify that property across all the different layers on the way down. Um, okay, so I'll just have to open that up again and or it should actually, yes, so they're all spinning away there. So I'll just play that back. Each one has been set to spin. Now when I go back up a layer, so it's I've done my work on my layers in four yellows, so when I go up a layer 
you'll see that that because four yellows is simply the, the composition that contains all those layers, that change is now visible all the way up throughout all of the pre-comped uh, layers. Now, there is an important distinction here to be made between two different types of pre-comps. We've got the 2D and the 3D pre-comps, and I'll just show you, rather than tell you, if I click on 3D here and rotate this around, you'll notice that well, it's not that obvious there. I'll rotate it further. Okay, so what we're actually looking at is it's like a, a wafer-thin view of our 3D movement. So it's like our 3D movement was captured on a super-thin TV, which is the pre-comp, and now that's been rotated. So we can only see what's on the screen. We can't actually see things on front of the screen or behind the screen. So what we're looking at here is 3D movement being pre-comped into a 2D uh, composition. And this might be what you need if you want it to look like the surface is capturing the 3D movement, but the surface itself doesn't have any 3D qualities to it. But on the other hand, if you do want to maintain that 3D aspect as you bring pre-comp 3D layers into other compositions, you need to select the this icon here. Now this you have used before for vector layers. Vector layers uh, will continuously rasterize. They'll stay sharp if you click this button on a, an AI layer, for example. But if you're dealing with a composition, it, it has a dual function. It does what's called a collapsed transformation. It toggles between collapsed transformations. And all that means is that when I click this, it turns it into more of a cube or a, 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 3D, um, a 3D composition that maintains all of the 3D-ness of the initial layer changes that I made. Okay, so all it means is that you can group together objects that are rotating or moving in 3D space and you can take those in their entirety with all of their 3D Z space and pre-comp them along as high as you need to go maintaining the depth as well as just capturing the image of something that is moving in 3D space. So this is using the four yellow squares as an example. If we go back to our our landscape here and we have a look at our shapes, we have essentially four what we call cubes made up of um, surfaces. And each one of these surfaces uh, is made of the letter M and a white solid color behind it. So there was a, a there was a, a certain amount of pre-comping done here, and we can trace that down through here. If we start at the top in landscape, and you'll see here all of the the three D compositions that we're looking at. Each one of these is pr a pre-comped series of M surfaces. But if we were to open up any one of these guys here, you'll see that we're looking at a single. 3D object made up of a number of what are essentially more compositions. So if I was to just get a camera for example here just so I could see this in a little bit more deep, whoops, now just for the purposes of viewing this is what we're looking at. We're looking at four surfaces that make up another composition and that composition is our four surfaces entirely, like our, our four yellow squares were previously. Now we're looking at a composition that has depth. But each one of those is made up of all these, and each one of those is made up of our flat surface. Okay? Now, I'm looking at it from a top-down point of view. Maybe it's not crystal clear as to how those compositions are coming together. In the tutorial that looks at the, the actual process of building the the, the the shapes, the cubes, and, and ro moving the camera through, you'll get a better idea because it starts with this and moves up. Okay, but for now, I suppose just to realize that you can have pre comps that can be 2D or 3D, and there's a significant difference in how they can be used and viewed uh, depending on which one you select.